I think everybody will agree with me that music stands as one of the cultural pillars of humanity. All across different origins and generations, a single song can represent any number of things depending on the person or the writer. Even in humanity's earliest days, music has sat as a pinnacle of human expression and art. Over time, people have iterated and adapted how music is made and enjoyed. Things like new instruments, new ways to listen to music, and most importantly for this discussion, new genres. Often you'll find that genres can fall by the wayside becoming niches for certain groups of people. This obviously isn't new in the world of music, but I want to highlight one that I've grown up with over the years that to me doesn't get enough attention as it is, and has a unique and storied history all its own. So let me bend your ear a while and tell you about my favorite underrated genre in the music scene. And who knows, maybe you'll find a new favorite as well. Okay, so quick disclaimer before we start. None of the music used in this video is mine, and instead is strictly taken from artists in the chiptune space. As a result, we're likely going to run into copyright issues, and if you are an artist that would prefer your music to not be shown in the video, then simply reach out to me and I'll replace it with something else. Credits for the song name and artist will be both in the description, and when a new song appears, it'll be in the left corner of the screen. One of the biggest points for me making the Rose Tinted Looking Glass series is to cover things that either were or still are important to me, hence the reason why I use chiptune that I listen listen to for this video. And I figure, probably do this video now before I maybe get monetized so that it's not a huge issue later down the line. And with that being said, let's get started. So it might not take a lot of thinking to figure out where Chiptune might have come from. Yeah, no, not even close. Well, okay, it's, that's kind of a lie, it's kind of close. The 1970s were an age in video games, where arcade machines took the scene in its entirety. Of course, this means that a soundtrack needed to go along with whatever game you were playing. This gets into a little bit of a weird distinction between chiptune and video game music, the latter of which being background music that is played in a loop, usually for the sake of repetitive gameplay loops for games. And chiptune is instead proper music, a definitive start and stop to it, and just generally something a lot more listenable. Nonetheless, this means that the earliest chiptune songs were often regarded as simply background music for arcade cabinets. And this is all true. Fast forward into the 1980s, and you not only start seeing home entertainment consoles, things like the Commodore 64 and eventually the Nintendo Entertainment System, but you also get the advent of trackers, which are applications that are meant for writing chiptune music. Prior to this point, it was simply programming your computer to make noises and that counted as music. In a pretty funny twist of fate, often in the modern era of video games, chiptune composers are often hired to do the soundtracks, especially in the indie space. Back whenever chiptune was still blooming as its own genre, this was the case, and instead we're a lot more separated. I should also mention that the article where I got the origins of chiptune will be in the description, and if you want more information on trackers, because I won't be talking about most of them, there's also a very good video by Ahoy, also in the description, detailing the timeline of trackers in their entirety. There are three trackers I do want to mention. In the modern era, we currently have FamiTracker, which allows artists to put different modules on to sound like different consoles, all of which being retro, and it's pretty robust for what it's worth. Alternatively, you also have LSDJ, or Little Sound DJ, which is extremely advanced but has a ridiculous UI that kind of looks like a computer virus if you don't know what you're looking at. What sets LSDJ apart specifically is that it can be loaded onto real Game Boy hardware, actually utilizing the sound chip inside of a Game Boy. It makes tracks written on it extremely authentic, and what's really cool is that you can use each individual Game Boy as a modular synthesizer, stringing them together to make really complex tracks. And of course, I can't forget about FL Studio, which more traditional artists and music enthusiasts will remember as being probably the most popular music producing software in the current day. Now going back to the dawn of trackers, the earliest trackers were proprietary software, and as a result, your run-of-the-mill consumer would be unable to access any of the applications. This led to the rise of people reverse engineering and cracking the software to gain access to the trackers and start making their own music. This starts the advent of demo scenes where people would make their own short tracks 
chiptunes, often in the form of the lesser known subgenre of chiptune, known as keygen. Interestingly, that means that the advent of chiptune itself started as something entirely illegal for the sake of consumers to make their own music with. And even to this day, people are still making keygens. The availability of all this software means that it's easier now more than ever to make any chiptune track that you want to, which is a good thing. Even still, I find the history of this genre super fascinating, and as I'm sure you can tell, I'm glossing over a lot of the finer details. But again, if you're super interested in those finer details, then you have the two links to go to. But with chiptune now being fully established, where does that put us now? With the evolution of chiptune growing side by side with video game music, not only have better applications come out for writing music, but also better techniques and adaptations made by various artists. If there's a kind of song you're looking for, odds are chiptune has it for you. Are you looking for something more chill? Maybe something a little faster with an 80s synthwave influence? Maybe something dark and industrial. Lyrics? Guitar? Both? Songs that make you feel like a cruel god. Songs that make you feel like you're fighting a cruel god. Or any one of the infinite number of chiptune remixes for existing songs. There's a large part of me that wants to say chiptune is the genre with the most covers, and if not, then metal covers are either just above or just below the chiptune genre. Don't quote me on that though, I'm not 100% sure. Yet even with all of these songs I was able to find over the years, I still find myself struggling to find new songs, and it's sort of an issue I have every couple of years. I sure hope nothing bad happened to the largest producer and or chiptune showcase organization. Okay, so now that we're done running the YouTube copyright gauntlet, I think it's about time that I start talking about chiptune equals win, otherwise known as chip win, which is going to be what I refer to it as for the rest of this video. But before we start talking about chip win, we're going to do a little bit of personal story time. So my interest in chiptune pretty definitively started whenever I was in middle school. I had a passing interest in Lego stop motion animations and ended up coming across the very first chiptune song that I would listen to. As a result of that first song, it ended up sparking a still ongoing search for more chiptune songs like it. And for a long time, it was just YouTube recommendations. Whatever 8-bit or chiptune or keygen song that I can find on YouTube. And that worked for a pretty long while. Eventually, I turned to actual music streaming platforms. I used Spotify for a tiny bit, ultimately got annoyed with its ads. But primarily, I was using SoundCloud. My primary reason for that is because of just how underground a lot of chiptune music is. It's hard to get officially on platforms like Spotify. But ultimately, there was still an underlying issue with trying to find chiptune in general. And I think a lot of it boils down to whatever algorithms are being used simply don't understand how to categorize chiptune. So for me, you could end up missing a lot of songs that you would really like just because they don't show up and the website or the application doesn't want to give it to you for whatever reason. So eventually, Eventually, I turned to Bandcamp just to see if there's any songs that I might have missed from my favorite artists. And occasionally, I would find the new song here or there too. So then an idea hit me. I had been listening to Chipwin for a good while, and being known for being a place to show off up and coming artists and returning artists, I figure where better a place to find new artists and new songs than Chipwin. So I checked the page, and it's completely empty for some reason. Hmm, that's weird. What about YouTube? Welp.
Chiptunes Equals Win is a compilation label, or rather was, that started life in early 2011 as a simple Facebook group for people to share other chiptune music with other people that were interested. Later down the line, Brandon L. Hood decided to go official and basically put a bunch of songs in a compilation. To my knowledge, it's typically once a year. Chipwin ended up being the biggest label for the genre, and still to this day, it's unprecedented just how important Chipwin was to chiptunes as a whole. It was not only people's introduction to chiptunes, but also the perfect way to find new artists that you like. And while you can still do that with the re-uploads of all the compilations that exist still, primarily on SoundCloud, but maybe you can find it in other places, the issue now is simply that Chipwin doesn't exist anymore. Chipwin shut down on every platform it was on in 2018. As a result of this, for a long time, so too was the music of hundreds of artists. The compilations themselves could last anywhere from one hour to four depending on how big it was. The dissolution of Chipwin was so impactful to many of the artists that many of them simply decided to stop making music. Some of them still make chiptune and some of them moved on to different genres. But even still, it was enough to hurt everybody in the community. So what happened? So the information here is a little bit on the wishy-washy side. Brandon has fallen basically completely radio silent. Nobody is able to reach him regardless the closure of Chipwin, and instead all we have are people who suffered the fallout, explaining what little information they know about it and the effects on them. From what I can tell, Brandon himself was facing bigotry allegations and otherwise discriminatory allegations at the time. Conflicting community guidelines on things like the Facebook group, the Discord, pretty much everywhere where the community can be involved, you'll see weird inconsistencies. It starts out simple and agreeable, no bullying or harassment for one of the rules, which is fair. Pretty standard for a rule set in basically any community platform you can think of. But then you have issues of historically marginalized people voicing their concerns over chiptune and its inclusivity. And suddenly they get banned for it for no reason. To my understanding, this was an ongoing issue, and it likely boiled over to a certain point and eventually just made everybody mad. This is a screenshot that I took from a Twitter account that goes by a bit of chiptune. They also do their own collaborations, but decided to cover the issues surrounding chiptunes equals win. You can pause to read it, but in short summary, Chipzel, a well-known chiptune artist, has been constantly voicing her concerns over women's rights, and specifically the inclusion of female producers in the chiptune scene. At first, this fell on deaf ears, but eventually it turned into an outright argument on several occasions. Again, I don't know the full details of exactly what went on into any of these arguments, or how drastic they were. A lot of it could have just fallen on deaf ears, but nonetheless, this resulted in Chipzel being blocked on Twitter at some point while Chipwin was still around. The part that fucks me up about all of this though is that I don't actually know who to blame here, simply because there's not enough information to go around. I choose not to hold any biases for one party or the other, simply because I don't know enough of what was going on. I think voicing your concerns is perfectly valid, and at the end of the day I don't think the entire deletion of the biggest pillars of Chiptune was the right way to go about it. But that's where we are now. Likely the result of Brandon just not wanting to fuck with it anymore. And make no mistake, I am walking on eggshells here by just talking about this sort of thing. But that's not the sole reason why I don't want to get into it. I do have an opinion on the matter, and that's simply I don't want to have one. I really don't know whose side to take here, other than man, Brandon sure could have handled that better. <laughs> I implore you to make your own conclusions based on what you can tell and what you can find. I'll have links to both the Twitter that I got the screen cap from, of which there's a pretty long thread about the specified allegations, as well as another Twitter by an artist with their own thoughts on the matter. I'll also have a link to the article, where you can get the context for all this information, and if you don't want to listen to any of that, then there's a podcast episode by Boa Constructor titled What Happened to Chiptune, where both he and Dubmood, another artist, go through their experiences and how they're going to go about the chiptune scene now. It's pretty old by this point, but food for thought is still food for thought. Let it be known that I am omitting a lot of information from here. Brandon has an entirely separate allegation against him, detailing artists not being paid. Again, I don't know if it's true, but if you want to know what happened to Chip when, well, there you go, I guess. But after all that, where does that put us? As I mentioned before, Chipwin was probably the most important thing to happen for the chiptune genre, but thankfully not all is lost. Re-uploads of all of the compilations are on Internet Archive. 
as well as various re-uploads you can find from the original artists. Both the rise and fall of Chipwin act as historical moments of both glory and tragedy respectively, but unfortunately the bad can only get worse. Within the same week, another collaboration project by the name of Cheap Beats also went down because of harassments of the S variety. Uh, come on, y'all, really? Pair that with the pandemic just around the corner and suddenly nobody can go out to do their shows. Both PAX and MAGFest acted as good ways to see these shows live, and their non-existence means that Chiptune continues to be kind of just this one little corner of the internet, despite the attempts of people in the community and the artists. Even now, we pick up the pieces and try to make something of a legitimate name for ourselves. I've even dabbled in making a little bit of chiptune myself. It's not exceptionally high quality, but it just goes to show you that I'm pretty passionate about this whole thing, and I'd like to imagine that most people are. The dreams and aspirations of everybody involved in chiptune, some being weathered by the effects of everything that's transpired over the past couple of years, and others, new and upcoming or returning, continue to make new stuff all the time. And I'm just glad that new people can find new ways to express their art, especially in a medium that I quite enjoy. The good thing about genres is that they never disappear forever. Even with some of the most obscure music, occasionally an artist will come out and just make something new. And it's for all these reasons that I still hold out hope for chiptune to maybe get big or mainstream. It doesn't have to be the biggest genre, but considering it's pretty commonly used in things like video game OSTs, as well as just occasional artists making songs, it means that this method of music is going to continue to have new stuff coming out, which is great. Look, I'm not afraid to put my heart out there, and what I'm gonna say next is gonna sound pretty stupid, but each and every song that I've listened to acts as an anthem for my memories. I can look back on how these songs make me feel whenever I discover them. And for listening to the genre for so long, I have an awful lot of memories. So I guess you can tell that I'm pretty serious about the whole thing. It's just one of those things that should get the point across that this is all pretty important to a lot of people. I have cried, expressed sorrow, celebrated victories, and shared experiences with people using this music. And it should just go to show you that this is a lot more than just video gamey ass music, and that I think it really deserves a lot more attention and respect than it gets. Anytime I make a video for this series, I do it mostly for the sake of being autobiographical, sharing my experiences and seeing if they've fit the same experiences that other fans have with whatever I'm talking about. And if you're not a fan of something, then maybe you can live vicariously through what I can express. All in all, it kind of makes every one of these videos a tribute to what I like. It doesn't matter how stupid, they were important to me and they had an impression on me. And anytime I make an RTLG, I think it's because they deserve to be remembered. And I think, specifically in regards to Chiptune, it's gonna be a part of my life that I constantly think about. It still is, to this day, my favorite genre in music. I've had passing interest in other genres that have faded in and out throughout my life, but Chiptune was the first one I was actually hardcore interested in. And I'd like to imagine that it's going to be that way for the rest of my life, because it's already been about a decade, and I just don't see that changing anytime soon. And I just hope that maybe with sharing this with y'all, maybe you can find a new interest, or get a discussion going about what Chiptune might mean for you, if anything. And with all that being said, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. I hope y'all have a good day. Like, comment, subscribe, join the Patreon, and actually, don't even do any of those things. If anything, just give me chiptune recommendations because I still need to find more music, just like, all the time. Take care, y'all. Nash. Hi Nash boy. This puppy doggy is a puppy doggy. Hey doggy. <laughs>